Welcome to Automate Fundamentals. Hi, I'm Luke. In this module, I'll take you through the construction and function of a diesel particulate filter. The days of dirty black smoke are rapidly fading due to diesel exhaust technology evolving over the years. Strict emission regulations require diesel engines to become much cleaner. The diesel particulate filter, also known as a DPF, is a filter device fitted to exhaust systems on modern diesel engines. These devices can be fitted before or after the catalytic converter. They require heat to operate correctly. This is why some diesel particulate filters are mounted directly after the turbocharger. The design of the DPF consists of a honeycomb filter monolith and is encased in a metal shell, just like a catalytic converter. Connected to it is a differential pressure sensor with pipes coming out of the inlet and the outlet of the DPF. We'll cover this shortly. These are particulate filter materials come in many variants. The most common materials used within a DPF are corduroy wall flow filters or silicon carbide wall flow filters. Other materials can include metal fibre filters, metal fibre flow through filters and partial filters. Common rail diesel engines fitted with a DPF require a special low ash oil. The purpose of the DPF is to trap the particulates created by all diesel engines, preventing them from entering the atmosphere. These particulates are extremely harmful to the respiratory system. The particulates are trapped by microscopic channels which are within the diesel particulate filter. The particulates, or soot, that attach to the walls of the channels within the DPF are burned off regularly in a process called regeneration. The regeneration prevents the diesel particulate filter from blocking up. There are three types of regeneration, spontaneous, dynamic and service. Spontaneous regeneration occurs when the DPF reaches 600 degrees Celsius or 1112 degrees Fahrenheit. If a spontaneous regeneration does not occur and the ECU calculates that the DPF has reached its storage capacity, a dynamic regeneration is initiated. Dynamic regeneration is indicated when the DPF light illuminates on the instrument cluster. The vehicle must keep going to complete the regeneration until the light goes out. If the dynamic regeneration is interrupted by the engine being stopped, it will be reinitiated on the next engine run cycle. If the dynamic regeneration is continually interrupted due to a number of short trips, the DPF light will start to flash. A flashing DPF warning will indicate that a service regeneration should be performed. Service regenerations must be instigated using a scan tool. During a service regeneration, extra fuel can be added in the form of post-injection pulses. This increases the exhaust gas temperature, creating extremely hot temperatures of around 600 degrees Celsius or 1112 degrees Fahrenheit to enable the particulates to burn off. If a flashing DPF warning is ignored, the soot accumulation may reach a level where replacing the DPF is the only possible remedy. Once a service regeneration has been performed, the reading from the differential pressure sensor will determine how effective the regeneration has been. Usually, a dynamic regeneration needs to follow a service regeneration. Remember to perform the appropriate drive cycle. If a regeneration isn't possible, the diesel particulate filter must be replaced. Untreated exhaust gases leave the cylinders, carrying the particulates to the DPF. They come into contact with the microscopic channel walls and the soot is trapped. The soot remains in the DPF until the regeneration process is initiated. Now we'll look at the DPF scan tool parameters. I'm looking at the data because I have a flashing DPF light. 
and the soot accumulation is over 100%, as seen here. I'll carry out a service regeneration and we'll take a look at an injector pattern using an oscilloscope. On this scan tool, service regeneration is located in the special functions menu. Once the prerequisites are met, the scan tool will initiate a regeneration. The pattern starts off with two pilot and one main injections. When the revs increase, one pilot injection disappears. The post injection pattern appears. This is to get the DPF to a minimum of 600 degrees Celsius or 1112 degrees Fahrenheit. The duration will vary depending upon DPF temperature and may even disappear. Once the regeneration is finished, the normal pattern will appear and a completed status will appear on the scan tool. This cycle occurs over and over again whilst you drive, keeping the DPF from clogging up with particulate matter. Symptoms of a failed DPF can be warning lights on the dash and poor engine performance. A DPF can fail by the housing cracking during a regeneration process if the storage capacity is too full, or oil and coolant contaminating the filter, causing it to clog. That's the construction and function of a diesel particulate filter. It's very important to understand how the DPF works to assist you when diagnosing. Remember, keeping up to date with technology is essential in today's automotive industry. Bye for now.